Hey guys, Scotty here. And uh, yeah, I've been trying to be very productive this weekend. Got a fair bit done. Managed to get the lawn mowed before it rained on Saturday. It is now Sunday, late afternoon Sunday. Um, I didn't get the backyard done. As you can see, that's all very long, long here. And then, well, out there near the clothesline, my wife is like, there's lions and tigers out there. Yeah, it's a bit of a jungle. And then it uh, looks like we're about to get heavily soaked. I don't know. The color doesn't seem to show up in the camera really well. But those clouds are very dark and it's looking pretty sketchy. So I think we're about to get dumped on. But I've made some very good progress on my plasma table build. And I'm going to show you some of that. So let's uh, have a look. So I've got the AU poked out a little bit. So give myself some room up the back. I couldn't push it take it out all together because the weather has been very ordinary. So there's the table. Um, I just haven't had time to mount the box properly. I've got it hanging via cable ties off a piece of wood that I've cable tied to the frame. Uh, we want to have sort of zero connectivity between the box and the frame. So I'm going to have to make up some sort of mount arrangement, but uh, you can see the box there with all the electronics. We've got all the wiring off the side. We'll have to tidy all this stuff up, of course. And then I've got our limit switches in there to the end, and then on the side as well. And then we've wired up all our motors and stuff. Well, that's the wire for the Motor over there, I'll tell you why I haven't got that hooked up at the moment in a sec. But yeah, so there's been some major progress. In fact, I have powered up the box and I'm going to power it up again for you guys so you can see. But uh, yeah, I've got a surge protector down here on the floor. I just wanted to make sure that just in case I screwed up something with a 240 that it wasn't going to kill me. But Still alive. Anyway, um, yeah, you can hear the motor or the fan humming in the background. If you hit the e-stop, it doesn't kill the motor, but it kills the all the controls. So I'll show you how that all works in a sec. So over here, I've got open builds open. So I've got to connect before I start. So we connect to the machine, runs all its little lines of code. And if we go over here to troubleshooting, we can see all our limit switches and stuff. So I'll turn the camera around so you can see some of this stuff. So I'm just going to show you that the limiter switches activate. This is the other end of that. And then if I go off the x-axis, that one does that as well. No, nope. have to use a broom handle to activate the other end. And then there's the, the Z. We haven't hooked up the Z yet, which is basically the torch height and activation. Um, all the pieces are here. I have not hooked it up. I wanted to get all this other stuff sort of working first before we got into that part. But yeah, so... Some stuff works, not everything though. So anyway, if we come back here to machine control um, and I go plus on the Y axis, it moves. And then we can move it back. Now I did have the wiring back to front on these uh, on this motor. Um, it's easy to do because there's like you get dealing with Chinese motors. There's no wiring diagrams or anything for them, so you basically got to you get in there and you measure the connectivity between these four wires. So you you want two pairs of connected wires. So two wires are going to be connected to each other and the other two will be connected to each other through the motor basically 
Um, so you just basically make those pairs, you know, you hook them to the pairs in your, um, your machine. And if it works perfectly, that's fine. If it doesn't work perfectly, you just got to sw switch it in the software, which is what I've done. I've uh, inverted it in the software. So now it knows that, uh, which way it needs to go. But yeah, it's good to see that we can have that moving at least. This is a good start. Now the bad stuff. The limit switches do not work. In fact, like, as I said, you know, like it, it triggers. And what I mean by that is if I get in here and say, all right, so I want to go Y minus. So I want to go, I think I'm going to make this end. It's going to be zero, zero. So move the motor down this end, move it that way. doesn't matter, but whichever way we move it, if I trigger this, it should stop it. It does not. Why? I do not know. I mean, obviously the triggering works. Why it's not actually stopping it from moving? Because what? as soon as that activates, it should just, you know, stop it. Uh, one good thing is the emergency stop does work. So if I move that and go, it stops it. So... Then you got to let it think about it. In fact, actually, if you've done an emergency stop, I think you need to, yeah, this is what it did to me before. So basically, if you do an emergency stop, you've got to disconnect and then reconnect. So I don't know if you can see any of this stuff, but uh, yeah, and it goes through all its little code stuff again. And we should be able to now use it again. Oops. No, it's got to unlock alarm. Why is that? Oh, maybe I needed to reset the alarm. Ah, okay. So there we go. Maybe I don't need to restart it. Maybe I need to just reset the alarm. That's a me not knowing the program thing. So if I hit the stop, all right, it stops. I'll do that. Okay, I can't start it again. What if I do reset the alarm, clear alarm? There we go. All I have to do is clear the alarm. All right. Now, x-axis. So the one that goes that way. She's not working, and I don't know why at the moment. I was just about to do a, a continuity test on the wiring, uh, just make sure I haven't buggered that up. I don't think I have, but um, I guess I need to double check and make sure that I haven't buggered up the wiring. And so, yeah, give me a few minutes to check that, and I'll come back to you and we'll see if we can get the x-axis working. But the box actually does things you gotta think you know like i've built this thing from scratch and it does things it's not cutting metal just yet but um it does things so i'm pretty happy about that but yeah yeah we've still got a little way to go so and it sounds like the rain's about to come in anyway give us a couple minutes and i'll see if i can sort out that this x axis problem it's bucketing down out there. It is pissing down. Uh, so I've had to move the Falcon in, bring the door down, because like I said, there was, it was coming in and there was a lot of wind and it was, well, it was just, yeah. The first half of the garage has got water all over the floor. Anyway, it's made my life very much more difficult now because um, with the box attached to the table, I've got no room to move. So it's making my life very hard. Um, so just check the motor and from a, you know, connectivity perspective, it's fine. Um, when you connect the motor, it 
lock solid, which it's supposed to do. Um, but it should also move when I tell it to. Uh, when you disconnect the motor, you can turn it freely, which again is what you're supposed to be able to do. But yeah, I am at a bit of a loss whether we've got a dud motor or maybe I've got the wiring wrong at the box end, but I don't see how um, because they're basically pairs. There's two pairs of wires and as long as they're paired together, it can either be right or wrong, but it can work. It'll work either way. It'll just work in reverse. So I don't know why it doesn't work, if that makes sense. It should work either way. It'll just work backwards one way or the other. So that's my problem at the moment, besides the weather. The weather is really annoying. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure that we're gonna get too much more done today. It's late. It's pissing rain. I've got the table doing things, which is a good start, but it is not cutting metal yet. So I think <laughs> we're gonna have to come back next week to look at that. Still, I'm gonna keep plugging away at it for a little bit, see what we can do, but it's not gonna be cutting metal today anyway. I've still gotta hook up the Z axis, axis. All right, so I've gotta wire up uh, this little motor, basically. So this is the motor that controls the up and down height with this little brass doohickey on there. Basically, it just um, turns the motor, spins that up and down, and that's going to control the torch height. And then obviously we've got another thing to, you know, uh, connect the torch and turn the torch on and off. I've got a plasma cutter on the floor there ready to go. So it's basically just a matter of, yeah, let's make sure that the table does all the table things. Then I can um, build the Z axis for doing the torch height. And then maybe we can cut some metal, but it's not gonna be ha happening today, maybe next week. So come and join me next week on Scotty's Garage where we might have the table finally working on part seven of our four part series. We're at part six now. Anyway, come and see us next week.